While we've touched briefly on the concept of angular momentum in AP Physics 1, how do we work with this idea in AP Physics C? Angular momentum, as a quick review from AP Physics 1, is considered the rotational analog to linear momentum. Usually written as a capital letter L, angular momentum is a vector quantity that has two common formulas. The first version is the moment of inertia of an object times its angular velocity. The direction of the angular momentum vector L here is actually the same as the angular velocity vector omega, which can be found through one version of the right hand rule. Curling your right hand's fingers in the rotation direction, with your thumb pointing in the direction of omega and thus L. The other equation is a cross product between radius and linear momentum P vectors, whose direction is found through another version of the right hand rule pointing your right index finger in the R direction, right middle finger in the P direction, with your thumb pointing in the L direction. Similar to how net forces change an object's linear momentum, net torques change an object's angular momentum. Angular impulse, or an object's change in angular momentum, can be calculated as the integral of the net torque with respect to time. If there are no net torques on the object, then angular momentum is conserved, meaning the total angular momentum of the system remains constant, giving us situations like the ice skating example from my past AP Physics 1 video on the topic. With these definitions covered, one fascinating new phenomenon that may show up on your tests is known as precession. Precession is the phenomenon you see in tops when they spin, the sort of rotation and slow turning of an object about a central axis while it's spinning by itself. Now, this concept is quite tricky to understand at first glance, so let's take a step by step and see how to derive the equation for the rate of precession of an object. Qualitatively, objects like this spinning top precess because the torque on the object tries to change the angular momentum as discussed before. Assuming these arbitrary lengths and masses, using our angular momentum equation and right hand rule from earlier, the L vector would point diagonally in this direction here. Essentially, this torque vector tugs on the angular momentum vector, changing its direction without changing the magnitude. Switching to a top-down view of these vectors, we can see that the torque will constantly change the angular momentum in this circular path as the top spins, leading to the precession motion we notice in real life. Solving the rate of precession takes some math. Examining a short moment after our initial diagram, the angular momentum would have changed by some amount delta L here. Using small angle approximations, the change in this angle, which we'll call delta theta, would be this quantity. But feel free to check out my math review video for the derivation of this simplification. From there, we can define our angular velocity of this precession to be delta theta over delta t from our rotational kinematics equations. The last step is to recall that our change in angular momentum is due to the torque's angular impulse on our top, which we can write as the torque mgr sine phi times the length of time it was applied for, delta t. Simplifying this fraction, we can arrive at our rate of precession equation. With that, you can feel good that you just finished learning about angular momentum and the concept of precession.